and welcome back to another episode of star seed chat we are back on wednesday nights at 8 p.m central time today i have lowell johnson here with me this is a part two um, i'm super excited to have him on and again if you haven't watched the first interview definitely go and check it out lowell's known for his trip to telos and he also has some beautiful pictures of inner earth and some spiritual photos that he's taken that he's going to share with us today. And before we get started, I have a discount code for Hopewell Farms CBD. If you are interested in CBD, you can get 10% off with the link in the description. And I also just released my inner earth deep chakra healing session with my inner earth contacts where we go in and clear balance all of your chakras so that's now available and you can also get that with the link in the description all right without further ado let's get started how are you Lowell? lily thanks for inviting me back man you know i, I feel badly for people that didn't get to hear all the stuff in the green room before because <laughs> there's always the stuff that we're at the level to be able to share and you know we're comfortable talking about extraordinary things. Um, yeah, this, your audience will get ready for that a little bit at a time. But it's there was a connection that you and I had right away, and I, I, I after I went through some of your other videos and really saw what you did to kind of get where you are. Mm -hmm. I have a great amount of respect for that. Because as I said before, first of all, you got your ass off the couch so you could go see these things, found nature. And I know how much time and effort it took for you to do all that research, all that camera work, all that time, you know, looking through it and then gleaning out what you were supposed to get. Thank you for all of that on our behalf, Lily. Now you're finally getting the recognition that was due to you. And so in that, you know, more people are going to get to see what the things that you saw, but that never would have happened had you not decided to go out there for I don't, I don't months. Is that how long? Do we measure your effort in years? Yeah, at least one full year. At this time, I didn't I didn't even work for a while. I did that. I went out every single day and made contact and spent time in nature. And they were teaching me the star beings. They were teaching me bit by bit. Each day, each time that I went out. So yeah, it was a bit of a process. Um, that's why I, I feel blessed to be able to kind of condense. I did a lot of trial and error too. Um, so kind of like condense and, and show people what I've been able to experience and help them to experience it too. But yeah, it's been, it was a year straight of doing that almost every day. <laughs> well, here's where I had a really good appreciation. And I honestly... I don't have the time to really go through all the YouTube things that people sent to me to see now. Um, I don't have time, but I took the time to listen to the one that you did about how to photograph UFOs. And Lily, it was really informative. Everybody needs to see that, not just because I'm an interested photographer. There is some rationale and the fact that you showed undisputable truth. Yes. Here is a demonstration that this stuff really exists. Yeah. So Lily is just one more block in the foundation of us trying to help you understand that this stuff is out there mm -hmm. and we're all getting ready for this kind of communication. So whatever preparation needs to take place, those of us that are on the inside are here to help you kind of navigate your way through it because it took us a ways to kind of navigate our way through that. None of us have lifetimes of believing about all this stuff. There's some kind of awakening. Uh, and I want to be careful about using that word with the audience that has this misperception of what it really is in the first place. But there is an awareness of things greater than ourselves that's growing in not just me, but lots of people. And this seed had not been planted until a few years ago. I'm watching a blossom and lots of people across the way and extraordinary things are beginning to manifest, which is how I got here. <laughs> I said long ago, 
when I had this extraordinary experience and source just keeps teaching me about what I think I'm going to do and what I'm actually going to do. I said, I never wanted to be a talking head talked about my experiences and look at where I am now. Yeah. I can't tell you how many interviews I've done, but I come to appreciate it. I've found tribe people that are close that we have communication with that I can have these conversations with that are in Australia and Slovakia and Italy and Denmark and the Netherlands, uh, not just domestically here in the United States, holy cow, this is really a good mechanism for us to actually leverage technology and communicate together. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And we, we kind of got a little bit of the, uh, the crash course to the past couple of years, but it's, it's picking up fast. And for anybody in the audience who hasn't seen that video, he was referring to how to photograph UFOs in the spiritual realm. I'll leave that in the description. I show a bunch of examples and teach how you can do it too. in and you don't have to be like a photographer. These things, like you were saying, these things are beginning to manifest around us. Um, people catch these things in in using their cell phone on accident. There was one picture that I featured in that video where this this woman, she took a picture of her two sons. In the middle of it is a silhouette of a being and they've got just a big smile on their face. That one, literally my jaw dropped. I was like, this looks like it's fake, 100% real. So these things are going on around us like all the time. And it's really excited to be able to get a glimpse of them. Whatever veil is thinning so that when we see these things in higher dimensional realms, when you're vibrate at those levels, somehow our cameras and our phones are able to capture those things now. I don't really understand it. Don't really care. Um, but it's true. We can't capture these things. And so, you know, part of that is so that it can be shared with others. Mm -hmm. And I know, I was thinking about this before, when people are going to look at these images. And I, somebody, at least one person has already suggested that they weren't real. Well, I, I can't argue with that. I can't help you come to your own conclusions. Only you can do that. And I'm not here to prove anything to anybody. I know what these are. I know who took them, how they took them, and where. And there's just, you can't make that up. I'm damn good with Photoshop, but I can't do this. Um, anyway, um, so let's see. Why don't you give me control? And I'll start to pull up some of these images because where we kind of left off was talking about the experience I'd had where when I was in Shasta, I had hoped to run into an ascended master. Really, that was what I wanted to do. I was hiking alone, off trail. And if there was going to be any quiet, solemn, silent place to do that, I was ripe for it. I had no idea that the mountain was going to open up and that you're going to have to give me um, control that the mountain was going to get up, open up and I would be able to visit you know, something that now I understand was you know, a dimensional trip. But mm -hmm. clearly, my vibration was high enough so that I could see those things around me because that's really the barometer for, to dictate what you're going to see when you're around you. The fact that Lily can see and capture the things that she does is her vibration matches that stuff that's around her. I can't imagine... And it'd be interesting for you to consider this in the future when there's a whole bunch of people around you next time, Lily. Do they all see what you get to see? Mm -hmm. I'll bet not everybody does. They're hoping to in the crowd, but if their vibration doesn't match that, they can stand in the same place and be totally oblivious, which is how I, this is where I find myself in a lot of cases. I get to see, especially when there's sunlight and it's diffused in different ways, I see spectrum as lights that the rest of you either aren't paying attention to or aren't ready to see yet. But the fact of the matter is, if I can see them, so can you. Um, my physiology is no different than anybody else's. I, I can't have super powered eyes that see colors of spectrums that yours couldn't see too. 
we're all made out of that same kind of matter. So it's exciting for me to be able to be, to be, I was one of the first ones to come back and tell you about it. I'm happy to do that, delighted to do that because there's something much better and much less anxiety in a world with white noise that we've just, we've gone through for long enough. Mm -hmm. Earth had always been an experiment in duality. And so that's what we were doing. So anyhow, I said that mm -hmm. I had always hoped that when we got to the point where I could tell this story because I knew I would, I wanted to be able to see, um, show people what Telos looked like. Yeah. So I'll show you. Yeah. In the middle of Telos, there's a white pyramid, and it has a capstone on it, which is not really depicted in this. So these images are a blessing. They're inspired, you know, they're AI illustrations. Um, and you feed this kind of thing keywords. This is damn close to what I saw, given the keywords I could drive. Um, that is exactly what it looks like in the middle of it. Now, you got to really understand that the whole city is in kind of a circular orientation, but that white temple, the pyramid is in the midst of the city and all the other outcroppings are um, in crystal. Wow. This is just another section. Telos covers, so they say 25 square miles five levels and again that's hard for us to really uh, comprehend because as 3d humans we think all that's underground and you can't go that deep and you can't yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i understand your perspective what i'm trying to tell you is that if you we can help you understand dimensionality quicker you'll understand what i'm getting to see here and what you're unable to see so far mm -hmm. Can we uh, rewind on on that for just a second? How would you kind of break that down um, for understanding the dimensionality and the kind of your ex experience there with like what you saw? Well, so it, it looks like a very open, like a huge open space. And that looks it like- It definitely is. When I got into this cavity, when it opened up out of the tube, we entered the city and you, I got to see a perspective of it elevated like a cityscape. I still could not see whatever, if you want to call it ceiling, roof, whatever it is. I looked up to see what the top of this chasm was, and I couldn't see the top. Nonetheless, the whole place was lit like daylight. And it didn't occur to me until later that I couldn't see any shadows that were being cast. So there's not like a beam of sunlight that comes in and illuminates everything. I didn't have an answer for why it was lit the way that it was. Well, everything is crystal energy and you can dim and you know brighten it just like anything else. You have to appreciate and keep in mind that the beings that are here in this realm are upper fourth and fifth dimensional beings who have the ability to manifest things in their you know, form in you know, ways that they can do that quickly. They have technologies that though they're waiting to share with us because humans weren't totally without merit what drives us and what makes us so special in the whole cosmic play of things is that our emotion is what makes us so creative. It's our instinct to take something and make it better. So we're beings that have grown to, you know, a state of the law of one where I know I'm connected to everybody else and that peace, love, unity, compassion, that's the foundation on which we just function here. Um, we're, they're not at this density any longer. Uh, they no really longer think about things in black and white, hot and cold, on and off. They see duality. Of course, they still see that. But the collective comes up with loving, creative remedies for it. And they always put the person with the best credentials forward, which is why they celebrate everybody's individual gift. Somebody is right for this gig, and it's not all of us. We didn't go to school to learn all the things we were going to learn together. No, we're here to nurture each other because we each have individual gifts, 
and we want to help draw that out. That's what we're trying to do. And all we get to do for that, because we're sovereign beings with free will, just like they are, is just allow everyone else to live their lives, support them when they're supposed to, and understand that whole sovereignty and free will. I need to respect that in others if I wish them to respect it for me. And once we do, wow, look what we're capable of connecting with. Because whatever special gift Lily has is unique to her. And she's powerful when she's in the room. I have special, powerful gifts of my own. And when I'm in the room, I can do things. But imagine what Lily and I can do in a room together when we combine those things. Now multiply that by six people in the room or what you have in the collective, because that is the mentality we're moving into. That is the world we're stepping back into. And the Lemurians are tickled to death to share with us technologies that they've got, because they want to see how we're going to make it better. We infuse it with our emotion and our creativity just blossoms. They look at things much more logically than that. So can you see where the interest is in reintegrating with us to see what we can all do together? That's what they're waiting for. Wow. that's So well, let's stop these. And let me pull some up of the city. Yeah, that was beautiful. That, that even well, started to kind of trigger me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cover the hydroponic gardens here first because that was actually the second place that we saw. So imagine this open space. This was on the third level of the most incredible technology you saw. And, you know, they're vegetarians by nature. Now I say that and people go, well, you mean they don't need any meat? Well, really, they don't need to eat any vegetables either. They're light bodies. Their bodies have already morphed into crystalline form. So when they take advantage of eating, they do it because they like it, not because their body requires that kind of um, maintenance and nourishment. It does not. They do it because they enjoy it. That, it always puzzled me when I first saw this. I went, how in the world does this feed everybody? I can see where the crops are probably perpetuated you know, quickly, because it's just crystal infused water that feeds this. It's just amazing. I always wondered, can this really feed the population? It wasn't until later that you put this whole crystalline idea together and yeah, we're not carbon bodies anymore. So we don't have to eat meat. We don't have to eat food. We don't do that. They do it for the pleasure of it. Wow. That's beautiful. Now let's see here. Yeah, the crystalline bodies. I wonder how long it will take for us to, to morph into the more crystalline bodies. I know it's already starting and there's a lot of physical symptoms and, and sensations and growing pains that comes with that too. But I'm just curious. I'm glad to hear you say that because there are physical manifestations of what the stuff that we're going through right now. Um, if you haven't felt unusual today or last night there was an x-class flare that came off the sun in earth's direction and there's been a solar stream that you know affects us all whether we're paying attention to it or not over the last couple of years i've been trying to pay more attention to what physically happens now when these phenomena are going on and as the empath that I am, man, I can I know when something's come off the sun long before I get a trigger alert from Ben Davidson and Suspicious Observers or anybody else. I can feel that energetically now, and I'm not the only one. All of us are beginning to feel that. So there's evidence that this light, this enhanced photon energy that's been, you know, I want to say like pummeling every sentient thing in its path, planets, beings, it's getting us ready. And that's why when I referred to earlier, holding high, the, the ability to hold higher light and greater frequencies, that's why we're getting that now. Human beings on this planet have lived with what's referred to half oriantric light. However, 
we're getting full spectrum oreotric light coming in our direction now. And so what Kumu was trying to explain to me last August and all the preparations that were made in my integration with those light beings was to help us understand that's what's coming our way and the assistance and the codes that were gonna be required for our bodies to adjust so that all that light would be used to its advantage. Every light worker here has that already encoded in us. In fact, there isn't a sentient being on the planet that hasn't been infused with this at a DNA level. Mm -hmm. You're being changed at a molecular, but at a cellular level mm -hmm. for the time at which Earth's consciousness and her being rises in the next level. Um, so will we, we have the opportunity to do that. But remember, we're sovereign beings with free will. It's my choice to ascend or not. Mm -hmm. um, right. Anyway, let's go through some of this. <laughs> I just, these are areas, this reminded me of the council chamber. At the very end of the tour I took, I sat with, um, Alex, who was my tour guide. I sat with Adama, who entered the room, and there were four other female beings that were there and invited me to sit with them for a while. When the meeting began, they went around and they all told me a little bit about themselves and told me who their names were. But you know, I, for the life of me, I remember who Alex was because he spent a, a bit of time showing me around. I knew who Adama was. Um, he looks a little like the illustrations on the book, but they do not do that guy justice. He's nine feet tall, by the way. Um, and then I remember the first woman who spoke. Her name is Shiama. And the reason I remember is because when the dialogue began, it was she who seemed to chair the meeting. So when she began to tell me the purpose of my visit, there were a couple of things that, of course, I wanted to understand. She explained that they had come to the same conclusion, that the shift in Earth's consciousness was imminent and that they wanted to prepare for the time when they could reintegrate with those of us that are on the surface. That's what all of this is about. And that they wanted to make more of an effort to make people know that they were here. Yeah. Now there's been legends about it forever. And there was a time when they used to engage but I think the last reports of any of that was like in the 40s when they would still come into town and they would trade gold for, you know, whatever they needed. They stopped doing that. And if you think about the timing for it, remember the reference that I made to the atomic bomb that we started to drop in the 40s? You got to wonder whether that had something to do with it. Right. So um, they just retreated to their own areas because their vibration was higher to begin with. And you know, when the rest of us got our crap together, they would reemerge. Mm -hmm. um, so it was here that they were explaining, they saw that and that they had hoped that when the time come, you know, I would assist in the process to, for reintegration. I found out the three reasons why I was chosen one, I could demonstrate that I could hold fifth dimensional awareness so that the concepts and the, thought, the ideas that they were talking about totally understood them and totally bought into them. Um, two, they heard that I had been, I was the protector of Gaia. That was a label that I got in an ayahuasca journey two years before. So who knew that now that was going to be, you know, you, you go figure. And then third was that, unbeknownst to me at the time, I was Lemuria. Part of the purpose I'm reincarnating at this time was to assist on this side as an emissary. When we wanted to make sure that the earth was going to rise in consciousness, you know, there was a point at which we weren't going to take any chances anymore that we were going to begin to incarnate mm -hmm. on this side so that those souls that came to assist Earth through this section, you know, here's the indigo children and the blue rays. You know, I understand now fully. I was part of all of that. I made that choice to come back here because I knew this ascension was going to happen within this incarnation's lifetime. I'm 69 years old. The clock is ticking. So pay attention when I share things with my guides. So... Uh, this was just kind of another illustration of the room 
when we got to the end, um, wow. we went back to this platform. This is actually uh, a dimensional realm. So yes, you can see how you can be in this space, but see that almost hologram above you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are entities somewhere else, but you can still communicate with them. Wow. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Did Sometimes you want to go back and take that in a little bit more? Yeah, I want to see that for a second. That's cool. Sometimes like I have a feeling I'm like they're watching me on a screen or something, aren't they? <laughs> now, exactly now look Lily I'm telling you just like I said before if you vibrated at this you would see this as well we're gonna we're all getting there together yeah. so these are just some public spaces and some temples this one to me is a stargate and, and if I yes. read this right this is a stargate to the Pleiades the Pleiades that's how I see this Wow, that's beautiful. That There's the common thread in all of these is light, 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 light. Mm -hmm. This is, um, and a, a, I think of it as an Akashic library, but um, you can only connect to the matter that's in here and the Akashic records that are in here if your vibration matches. You step into this, and if your vibration doesn't match, nothing happens. But if it does, you have unlimited access to the Akashic records that are in this temple. Wow. That's incredible. So uh, can I ask the beings that you saw that you just explained a moment ago, um, did they all look like Lumerian, like the Nordic looking? Or were they, did you see yes. the variations? No, um, you know, the, the few that I saw were all dressed about the same time. But yes, Nordic to me is the way that I would describe them. You know, my, my heritage is mostly Swedish and German. So I resonated with, you know, the ones who look like they're Swedes to me. I'm Swedish uh, and too. There you go. Oh, yeah. Like blonde hair, blue eyes. And, you know, like skin that can't flaw i still live in minnesota i look young um even though i've been around all this cold so maybe there's just part of that when you grow up in the cold like that <laughs> you're just a little better packaged than everybody else but let's awesome. see so then what was that one uh that, can you go back to that last one is that another stargate it's another stargate that's right so I, you know, you can tell me when people say, where do they go? Well, I don't know, where does your intent wish to go? Because that's what these things all connect. And there are more and more of these vortexes. I know we show them in these illustrations, but what I'm telling you in the real world, the last times I've been to Shasta, there have been more energetic portals that have shown themselves to not just me, but others. And they're almost tangible. I went there first sensing energetic portals that's what i was looking for in the mountain and i found these places but they seem to be flourishing and it only makes sense because my guides have been telling me as well they're not making it hard for people to find these portals when the time comes mm -hmm. no no there's going to be lots of them so make it easy for people to get in this was another type of one of those holographic type rooms where you can sit here and, you know, hyper jet to somewhere else. And then this is called the Solarian. The, the, this is the Hall of the Solarians. If you know the history of Earth and the differences between the Solarians who have been the benevolent guides that have overseen Earth, as opposed to the Nephilim, kind of the dark energy. Well, it was necessary for the Solarians to take back control of the actual physical planet and through all of the dimensions where the Nephilim had had access through the lower dimensions. But according to, you know, the violet flame and um, other galactic guidelines, they couldn't have any influence on dimensions above that. 
All of that still needed to be cleared in order for the Solarians to come back and take command of the planet so that these areas now can be cleared and prepared for what they call LP40 ascension. It's the next stage of Earth's ascension. All the preparation's been done. So the Solarians, yep, got what they need to be back in charge. 20% of the planet has already been stabilized and ready called golden tie allotments. These are areas that people are already being guided to. They're Hawaii and Egypt and Greenland and places that you know are energetic, Shasta, Sedona. Um, people are getting drawn to them for reasons they don't understand. Some of them are going there to help clear these spaces because that's part of the, the issue. Um, they're intentional places that have been in the cosmic cycle all along. So this is going on now. Mm -hmm. I think this was just, this is another temple. Wow. And then this, this is one of my favorite things. Um, and it was kind of Dave Wallace who helped me put this into perspective. You know, you've seen these white lights moving around in space. Sometimes they're cigar shaped if you can see them close enough, but a lot of times they look like a white orb and that's exactly what they are. This is an interstellar conveyance sphere. So you step into that bad boy and it's a light craft. It takes you anywhere else you want to go. Wow. So people can, these beings can just step in and then it takes off. They go wherever they want. Correct. That's amazing. Um, this was their a version of their mystery school. Now, when I say mystery school, you know, they don't have books. They don't give homework. There's no assignments. There's no grades. Your mystery school, along with the rest of your tribe here, is all going on while you are living your life. And we are all of that. The kumbaya we were talking about before, where your tribe helps and just allows provide you whatever love and support you need and whatever guidance along the way we can. That's your school criteria. That's your agenda. It's not the same as everybody else in this room, but everything is an appeasement and an understanding of light, what it does, how we use it to transmute negative energy. There's still a bit of that that we're going to have to do. Most of the negative influence that was here on the planet, I shouldn't say most of it, as I understand it, it has been removed. That does not remove the residue that's been left behind. And so here we know that light workers have a little bit of cleanup work to do, but that's what we're here and equipped to do. Mm -hmm. We come packaged so that we understand how to transmute negative energy into light. That's what we do. Right. Yeah, the, um, the Arcturians, I have been working with this week they uh were telling me yesterday about clearing the astral the astral realms um but yeah i think we've already we've we've put a pretty good dent in it we just got a little bit further to go <laughs> that's right so i mean that was my telos journey wow so those are cool illustrations um but let's take you into what I think matters more and well that that just sparks I, the imagination like seeing it seeing it is believing it it is feeling it and like I was talking about before we started before we hit record the star beings they told me whenever I was starting to gather all this footage and making contact with them they they said it's a it's a form of channeling. The frequencies is going into that art. It's going into these photos, and it impacts you. It it's like encoded with all of these activations. It places something in your field. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if anybody was triggered by any of those photos of inner earth. There was a couple of them where I saw, and I was just like, oof. I feel like I remember that. <laughs> okay, I'm almost ready yeah. with pictures that are not illustrations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So These now we're gonna... were pictures from my experience with 
six dimensional light beings. Beautiful. So first of all, um, a little bit of background. There was a woman I met on this particular day that I did not know before that. She seemed to know plenty about me. She knew about my Telos visit. And to make uh, uh, you know, the this, this story go along a little bit quicker, I learned later she's a hybrid. And what that means is that back at the time in the early 50s when our scientists somehow had come across exotic DNA that they had looked for soldiers who would volunteer for programs to experiment with you know, crossing these. They definitely had experience because the beings that had this DNA composition had incredible gifts and had powers that, of course, they were interested in seeing how they might be able to take advantage of, shall we say. Um, her father was one of those soldiers who volunteered for the program. Her mother knew nothing about it at all until Kumu got to be about five years old and started to demonstrate abilities and you know things she could do and see and being she connected with, that just became her thing. And then from that time until she was, I think, teenage, she was in a government program with other kids who had similar capabilities. Was this a secret government program? Was it like yes. a secret? Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm sure, you know, I don't, don't want to put any energy out there, but I, you know, this was back when the military and with scientists were trying to figure out what it is that they had their hands on. Mm -hmm. They've known about a lot of this stuff for a lot longer than we ever knew. And it, it happened really when I think about it, just before, you know, my lifetime began. Mm -hmm. um, all of it's been hidden for too long, but you can't hide it for much longer. And now, like in my case, you can certainly tamp down somebody's story. What you can't tamp down is when people are having dimensional experiences and you go back and come back. You can't stop that. Right. So, you know, I'm not the only one that's starting to blossom out and have these, but certainly I was chosen for whatever reason to be able to get out and be willing to talk about this when it was done. So anyway, mm -hmm. so now that you know who Kumu was, uh, I was coming back from a trip across the country and I was due back in California on this Friday. She heard I was gonna be at this particular place and uh, she showed up there. So when I got there, she was already there. I kind of went over and shook her hand and you know, I didn't know her before then, but I wanted to kind of sense what her energy was and it was a little different. I just couldn't put my finger on what. As the day went on and we kind of sat around, you know, she knew the people that, you know, lived at this compound it had been there before because she and uh, Mickey, who was the guy who lived there, had been healers and knew each other for at least 15 years. They had done lots of Andara crystal healing and that kind of will work, you know, over time. And that's how they knew each other. At the end of the day, because we were all sitting on the back deck and just kind of getting to know one another, around five o'clock, she went over and stood behind this plant. These are like eight or nine foot plants back there on Mickey's deck. And she started to call in these light beings. You can see that one clearly right there. Now, I didn't know what she was doing or what the purpose was going to be. So she took a put couple of pictures of them in the, in the vicinity just to get them there. Wow. And then she called me over. She said, I want you to stand behind this plant. I want you to put your arms around it. And she gave me these eliomes to chant. So I did for like a minute until I felt silly. And then, you know, I just stopped and I turned around. And by then, she was done doing whatever she was going to do. So we went inside because it, there was too much sunlight for me to see what she had taken on her camera. And when we got in the house, she showed me this. Wow. What yeah, that doing? light being is going in my third eye and up my chakra. And then I was getting some downloads. Wow. Wow. Literal downloads. <laughs> you can clearly mm -hmm. see that's going. The last one was going to coming directly into your yep. third eye. Wow. 
So this is Friday. She leaves. The next day, I had intended to stay there for the weekend. Um, you know, I had a small IT company for a long time, did lots of websites. And when my friends are going to think about upgrading them, I'm willing to help. Well, Mickey was in that situation. And so I was going to spend the weekend there. Anyway, it got to be Saturday morning and the phone rang. Well, it's Kumu and she's coming back. Now, we don't know why, but she'll be here a little afternoon. Now, normally she travels with an entourage. When I saw her on Friday, there were six or seven people with her. Some are students, <clears throat> some are colleagues that just travel and you know watch the phenomenon that go on around her because she has seen some extraordinary things and been involved in clearing and doing lots of earthwork. She's, uh, her family's Hawaiian. They've been there for generations. She's got a real heart for the planet. Um, when she came back, she brought enough Chinese food for like three dozen people. And um, these plastic cases filled with artifacts. Wow. Three of them were ceremonial pipes. So I don't, I took pictures of all of them. Now, first of all, who gets to see these things ever? Who gets to, you know, take pictures of them and keep the pictures? And who gets to use these? Oh, yeah, because we're going to go through a ceremony. And of all these three pipes, oh, we're going to use them all. This was one. And I just, I took pictures of every side of it. Because Beautiful. something in here tells me there's some code in here that I'm supposed to understand. And I wanted to always go back to look at it. So this was one of the pipes. This was another one. Wow. And then this was the third one. And the reason I showed you these last two is because as I was very curious about what was on these and what was carved, I started to see similarities, not just that you could see like an alien orientations on these things. Right. But I want you to look at this right here. See that symbol kind of off to the left? Mm -hmm. Look familiar? Mm, what does that mean? Uh, they're the same. I don't know what it means, but I'm certainly curious about it. Yeah. So then um, at the end of this day, Mickey on this property lives on a slope and down where we are right now, there's a huge Andara crystal spiral, huge energy there. And so she asked us, to go down and stand in the middle of it, Mickey has a white angel next to his center stone, the goddess stone that he got from Lady Nelly. She said, I want you two to go stand behind it. So this was a picture that she'd taken first from where she was standing. The sun is not coming in that direction. That is not the sun. Wow. Wow. This was a dimensional picture and when you look really close at my hand, I'm not holding anything, but it sure looked like, let me see if I can find a better image of it. Doesn't it look like I'm holding something? Yeah, it does. Kind of look, when I looked at it, it kind of looks like a baby dinosaur. <laughs> it does. And then someone <laughs> whispered, it's a serpent. I went, what? Well, then when it was explained that that is Shiva rising to protect you for something that's about to come. Wow. So then as we were standing in the middle, she starts to snap pictures of the light beings that she's called in this day as well. Now, something first, I had to go back and review the sequence of all of this, Lily, because whatever happened on Friday, whatever interactions I had with those light beings must have been, I met some condition. Because if that interaction didn't go the way it was supposed to go, she never would have come back Saturday. Why? No, all of a sudden I'm gonna be back in, in engaging with light beings again. And when we saw this, again, the sun, the sun's coming from, see kind of where the, the light shadow is off to the top of the screen. Yeah. The light's coming, the sun's in that direction. 
not where this orb is over us. And I can't see around, I can see around it, but I can't see through it. The thing's so dense, it's like a mass. Wow. And there's energy that you feel in it. That's my favorite because it just looks like it's bell-shaped. Yeah. So this is Saturday. She leaves again. Now, I don't know what I'm supposed to make out of all of this. <laughs> all I know is that in about two weeks, I'm scheduled to present at the Shasta Conference at the end of August with Rob Potter. She's going to be there about 10 days before. And I always like to go early than the conference anyway to spend some time on the mountain, have some time myself before all that starts. So we agreed that that week before the conference, we would find time that we would be able to kind of connect while we were there. Mm -hmm. So we found a spot in Panther Meadows to kind of sit in a camp spot. She took her chair. I brought mine because I didn't know anything about her before those two incidents at Mickey's and whatever social chatter you have in that kind of setting. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to know more about who she was, who I was, and what am I doing here? So she began to tell me that's when I learned about her father and that program and what her mother did and didn't know and what she'd been doing and what she'd been exposed to and, you know, how she got here. When I asked her, when I first sat, I said, you know, it occurred to me that we went through, Mickey and I, that day that you brought those ceremonial pipes, that you put us through a ceremony. And you really didn't advise us that that was happening, much less ask for our consent. So you can appreciate that I got some trust issues that we need to overcome here. And I want to, because something tells me you have something I'm supposed to get. But I got to get past that first. I said, can you shed a little light? And I, she, she just said this one sentence. Well, I had to. Well, instinctively, I knew she had to, but I also knew that she didn't put me in touch with those light beings on some decision she made. Mm -hmm. Some other authority came along and put her in that position to put me in the position that we're going to go. In. So anyway, mm -hmm. um, over these next couple of days, she's going to invite me to a couple of ceremonies that I think I'm like the fourth wheel. There's three people that came in from Miami and they're going to go on a, a property uh, that has a, a Russian pyramid with some really interesting energy. It's unmistakable. She's done some other work there before. So I got invited to go along. I didn't realize that I was the fourth chair of the four and that the interactions and the recall I was going to have for Egypt were going to happen that night. Wow. Then when I thought that was over, because she was scheduled to leave the next morning, when we got back to where those people were staying almost midnight Friday night, she said, there's one more ceremony I want you, I, I want you to, to participate in. So if you'll meet us here tomorrow at noon, we'll all just drive out together. Went, okay. I, again, think I'm a tag along. What I'm about to learn is, no, this is for me. Uh -huh. And so there's an area um, north of Weed, it's still in the Mount Shasta area, but about 40 minutes from where we were, there's this out in the middle of nowhere, there's nothing else out here on this Veterans Memorial Garden or Park, there's this memorial sculpture garden, and inside of it, there are these, there's nine of these amazing sculptures, all different there to commemorate, you know, things about um you know in celebrating our veterans <clears throat> i happen to take a picture of this when we drove in there's four cars there's 12 people and i think you know i'm just the tag along so once we got settled i can see that kumu has dispatched some of her people to prepare areas to prepare it you know to ask, to ask permission for us to access it because she's going to call in some other spiritual realms and she's setting the stage to do that once she got them busy 
I was the last car that kind of pulled in. This is kind of a circular drive. So I was actually right where I had opened up the back hatch of my car and I was waiting for her to come over. Well, when she did, she said, I want you to go over by that statue over there, take your chair and just wait for me and I'll come back and give you further instructions. So I headed over by this. It happens to be called nurse. But when you get close enough and you see the size of this thing, remember the frame of reference I had for Lemuriates? They're like eight or nine feet. That's what this was like for me. Wow. So I took this picture in front of it, standing up. So you kind of got a perspective of the scale. But this is where things are about to happen. It's three o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. Sky's clear. And so before we go there, Kuma tells me what's going to happen. She said, um, I'm going to have you lay underneath this statue. Your feet are going to be here. Your head's going to be there. And I want you to you know, get in whatever meditative state you need to and get your intent on. What is it that you want to get out of this? What questions have you got? And I had two, <laughs> not the least of which is, if any of this is true whatsoever, you just show me one light being and I'll buy it all. I'll buy it all and I will do whatever it is that you need me to do after this. So when this began, she said, I want you to hand me your phone. So I'm going to take your pictures with your phone. And no one can ever say, I took them, sent you pictures. They'll always be in your cloud from this day forward. So mm -hmm. when I lay down, she started to take pictures in the perimeter. And that was the first being that showed up. Wow. In the end, there wasn't one. There were four of these beings that showed up. The rainbow is just so vibrant, those colors. Yes. Whatever spectrum, you know, they carry and can, but, you know, they just, in order for us to see them even like that, they got to kind of move in and out of mass. Six dimensional beings, you know, yes, they can carry form, but they usually don't. Mm -hmm. Wow. So could you feel them? I could, I mean, we'll get to a photograph and I'll show you what happened. Wow, that sounds like the weekend of a lifetime. <laughs> it was, so this one. <laughs> oh, wow, hold up. <laughs> while I was laying there, I could side? hear, huh? I'm sorry. I said, are they on each side? It almost looks like- Yeah, there's side. actually four of them there. Wow. I can hear what sounds like the biggest hummingbird you'd ever heard, just kind of a, a sound that went like, and it was hovering just off and over my head to the right. Well, then it stopped. It got my attention because it was unusual. And then when it went away, I just thought I'd dismiss it and I'd move on to the next thing. Well, the next thing I knew, I could hear it over on the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. Same sound, a little bit longer this time, but what was noticeable was that if I thought that this was a hummingbird or some kind of critter with its wings flapping that fast to make that sound, it would have to move. I mean, nothing stationary, even a hummingbird has to move. It didn't do that, and then it, it stopped again. And then shortly after, it happened right be behind my head same sound and this time i could feel an energy that started from my crown and passed all the way through my body it was like cold electric you just felt if this is what light feels like holy cow i automatically felt lighter wow. felt whatever charge they left behind was like oh man now i know i have the ability they just passed the torch mm -hmm. so that i can transmute negative energy and delight in the same way that they can wow. and here's the news lowell we're going to show you this because you're going to show others mm -hmm. right then these were the last images that i didn't really get to appreciate what is that? and so if you look at that thing on the top oh goodness. see a change yeah it's a oh. ship that's spinning Oh my God. <laughs> wow. That is like a perfect geometric shape. Look at that. The angles, the mm -hmm. corners on that. 
All right, Star Family. Are you going to let me get some pictures <laughs> like that? <laughs> That's okay. amazing. <sighs> wow. That was amazing. I get charged every time I see you. Yeah, I'm wondering what's going to happen. Um, I feel like after this interview or this evening, something interesting is going to happen just from like looking over those photos and speaking with you. <laughs> it's, I, I know that there have been some coats that I was carrying and I didn't know what they were for. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard that they had been released and that they were assisting, you know, people with this whole idea that they're going to have the capacity to hold greater light. Terrific. If that's what I was carrying around, that's good for everybody. I'm totally good with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing those, those pictures um, and all of that. I'm just like, woo, beautiful. That was very, very beautiful. Thank um, you. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. Um, are you going to be going to Mount Shasta? I saw you make a post about going, going back this, this spring. Yeah. I'm, I won't be at the um, conference this year. Rob moved it into June. Uh, it's just harder and harder to find space to do it at all and then trying to time it. Right. Um, he had to back it into June. And I had plans to probably be out of the country for you know that period of time. I will be back there sometime after like June. I think the 10th is when I officially said I'll be there through the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So if that coordinates and bumps up with anybody else's schedule, I plan on being there, but there's a good chance I'll be going back again before the year is done. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, I also wanted to ask you after, so after that weekend where you got all of those photos, what, what kind of happened after that? Like after having those experiences, how did it change you and what types of things began to happen? Well, there was other things that led up to that. There was an, another gift that was put in my path. Um, the material that Andara crystals are formed from, um, this powder that was kind of seeded here on the planet in a couple of places, the powder is called Ethereum. Mm -hmm. People um, and gods have been chasing this stuff down because if you take white Ethereum powder and you transmute it into metal, it turns into gold. It's what everybody wants Ethereum for. They think you know, they can turn it into metal. It's uh, If you're an alchemist, you understand the ability for this powder to be transmuted into this form. But Ethereum carries 70 different trace metal. And when it fused the way that it did, it um, depending on what metal it picked up, that's what determines the color of Andaras. That's why you see so many different colors. There's red, green, blue, yellow, orange, purple, you name it. I've seen variations of all of it. Now I understand why. But Ethereum and even just holding an Andara is a way to help unlock your DNA. Once you connect with your Andara, I've been around crystals all my life. I'm a Capricorn. I'm an earth person and stones and rocks in my bag. So when I got around crystals... I appreciate them for what they are. And everyone has the ability to assist us in some way. Quartz has its own magic. Um, Amethyst, moon. Yeah, exactly. They're designed so that when you imbue them with your intent, their job is to amplify it on your behalf. And it works. If you understand how it works, it works. Andaras work differently. They're like finding a whole new best friend that carries Akashic records that you're about to get access to. And they're connected to every one of their brothers and sisters on the planet. So you think about what access you have to greater things when you're holding that material. Anyway, I had Ethereum gifted to me. Didn't know what it was. I had to go down a rabbit hole to learn what it was and learn that there was a responsible way to use this because it was in fact gonna crack open my DNA um, there were cautions that came with it too that I wasn't aware of. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I had been gifted it back in May and started ingesting this stuff. And I could tell immediately physical changes in me, 
my joints felt like I they had been restored. And I've been a hockey player pretty much all my life. Wrists, knees, ankles. Yeah, they had their wear and tear. I'm telling you now, after I started ingesting this stuff, all that went away and my joints feel like I'm in my early 20s again. Yeah. It opened up when I speak in the aspects that now step in and, you know, interpret themselves through me, it's opened up a whole another level of profound things I say that did not come from here. I get that. Yeah. Um, again, it's another thing that I can't tell you where to find Ethereum because you can't buy it anywhere. Clearly that was meant for my path, but you can hold it on guard and get exactly the same results. Am I saying that you need to have these things to assist in the ascension process? Absolutely not. You'll get there without it. Are these an accelerator? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. And just connecting, one of the biggest things also, connecting with your star family, connecting with these beings, they accelerate the process so much. Like I could sit there and set the intention to activate my DNA, activate my DNA. And that works. Um, but whenever you get the Pleiadians to come in and send you frequencies or, you know, another star being, it's just, whew. Yes. I rock. We, um, I, I've learned um, how to distinguish between the ones we know and what we don't. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's my understanding that there's 140 different alien species that you know have interacted with the planet in some method. Mm -hmm. Some we're aware of, some we're not. Those that we are aware of and we know Dave Wallace refers to those as ultra terrestrials. We know them. Actually, in many cases, they're higher aspects of us already. It's us coming to assist. It's all the other ones that we kind of put in the ultra or extraterrestrial category that are, you know, it's not that we aren't beginning to have contact with them because Dave will be the first one to tell you there's some new species that are visiting him that he has not had experience with. But that's why Dave through his stuff and this has been going on now for five years between him and kim jim to begin with there's been a level of trust that's been built and so the new species that are coming here that serve as ambassadors on their own are coming here to familiarize themselves with earth and seeing what it is that it's like to be here um, he's told a couple of cute stories and i don't ever want to step on dave's stories because i love to hear him tell it but he's shared some instances where Kim Jim has removed things from his house because he takes them back like artifacts to show his friends. Look what I got from Earth. And then they magically somehow appear later on. That's super funny. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. And yeah, that's that's also what I was talking about. Not, not just connecting with our, our, our cosmic family, also including higher aspects of yourself is also a big part of that some of the the ets that i've met a handful of them um they're me they're other versions of me higher aspects of me but they can still come and interact with us and teach us and help guide us because we've done it before <laughs> we're just like remembering i yeah. love to hear you say that you know it's your generation that's going to really save the rest of us well i shouldn't say that yours is the one that's open enough to listen to these expressions and then decide for yourself. You're all very discerning. Thank God. Um, I think that my generation just got in a comfort zone with the things we were conditioned with. Now, there were some that, you know, snapped out of it like me. But I have always tended to kind of migrate to even my son and his friends. They were tried always. I understood young people and I understood women's perspectives. I got all that. But I looked at things, you know, through a lens of love always anyway. Mm -hmm. And I now I know why. I understand who I am and what I'm here to do and who the rest of us are once we wake up from the stuff we just let distract us. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, beautiful. Um, and also, uh, before we wrap it up, did you want to share about your 
the the book that you're making and collecting all these? <laughs> like that's just so cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, here, let's see. Let or me... kind of just tell us, you know, what what you're what you're up to. Um, how people could maybe see some of these photos that you were sharing the uh the, yeah. the illustrations. I will hold on just a second. I'll find some cool stuff here. Share them a lot on Facebook. Yeah, I had uh, divinely been inspired by um, images of inner earth. Mm -hmm. Somebody had showed me the way to an AI illustration program that's keyword driven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you still have to have the right thing in mind. But when I wanted to see a way of showing some illustrations. And I just keep getting drawn back to inner earth, inner earth, inner earth. There's reasons why I'm being dropped back there to show these things when I come back. And they have triggered people in many ways. Some of them are Atlantean in flavor. Some of them are Lemurian in flavor. But there's just a lot of things that almost look like dimensional here. This almost looks like there's a part of it that's floating. Yeah. So. Over the last, I want to say three or four months, I've been almost obsessed pulling these things out. And people have begun to use them for book covers. And they've been used for kids' um, cartoon illustrations. They've triggered people in a lot of ways. And when people saw them, they went, you know, I'd love to put one on my wall. There was a girl actually from Slovakia she was a graphic designer and when she first saw the ones that I'd had of uh, that I thought were Atlantean she said oh my god I love that you should put that on Redbubble so that people could buy that because I want to put that on my wall well I didn't know what Redbubble was so there's a process you can't just take these images that AI creates because the the pixel count isn't high enough for them. Wow. So now you gotta learn how to upscale images to make them worthy of printing on apparel and big prints. So oh, I figured that out too somehow. Don't, don't ask me where the tools came from, but they came. And when they did, I've started to accumulate a few of these. So now on Redbubble, there's over 440 images that I've been put up over there. Wow. And as people have been attracted to them and they started buying them, some bought, somebody bought four prints the other day and said, I wanted to buy more, just do a book. Wow. So I listened to them. And in the last 36 hours, I finished a book. It's got 300 of those images in it. Um, and it'll be available shortly. Then there's a whole other realm where I was starting to illustrate um, elementals. Elves, fairies, wizards, uh, that book will be done before the day is done. And they were just meant to be, there's no text in them. Think of a coffee table book. All I wanted to do is just show these amazing pictures because when you see them like this, oh my God, I want to zero in and look at the detail on it. That's what everyone's been asking. So mm -hmm. all of them will be in these books and you can just go page to page to page to page and they'll just be picture, 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 picture. Beautiful. That is so exciting. That is just, yes, so incredible. Very inspiring. Um, so thank you for putting all of this together. Uh, that, yeah, that's just so pretty. I, I also want to uh, get my photographs and from like the UFO footage and sunset and the clouds and all of that. I've been visualizing putting them together and not a scrapbook, but yeah, just kind of like a picture book for a while. So that's just super exciting. Uh, and I bet that's, it's creating a ripple effect and inspiring many, many others. Thank you for saying, I, I can see that that's happening. Yeah. You know, again, I just look at it. I love to do this. I could be addicted. I can continue to do it all night because when I see one, I want to, I want another rendition, another rendition. Right. Um, but it's triggering people who have memories of, I know that space. I've been there. Thank you for showing me. It was in my field, you know, last night in a dream. Yeah. Yeah. That feels good when you hear that. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Lal. It was such a pleasure speaking with you again. Uh, do you want to tell people where they 
can find you or you know, anything else, you know, update? Yeah, the easiest way to find me is you can find my website. Just type Lowell Johnson, no spaces, dot info, and you'll get to my website. So you won't have to understand the encrypted nature of my website. <laughs> Just type Lowell Johnson, dot info, you'll get to my website. Okay, awesome. All right, well, thank you so much for coming on. And thank you, everybody who is watching this. I hope everybody has a wonderful evening and take care. Bye. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please don't forget to like this video and don't forget there's an inner earth deep chakra healing session available to you with the link in the description and DNA activation kits will be coming out soon. I'll see you later, star brothers and sisters.